And his plan was to create this inner circle of Masons uh, called the Illuminati, uh, the Illuminati, that means the enlightened ones, and that this inner circle of Freemasons would then spread out among Masonic lodges, and then the Masons in turn would see to it that their members were put in prominent positions in government, and that then the Illuminati's influence would enable the uh, liberal uh, democratic principles of the Enlightenment to be spread throughout the world. It had three ideals. Separation of church and state, controls on the power of the state, and the emancipation of women. Three, uh, three planks in their platform, if you will. Now, one could say that the Bavarian Illuminati won because, def because that, in, in, in effect, defines Western society. Because the Illuminati plan to change the world in many ways came to pass, some believe the order functioned through the revolutionary movements of the 18th, 19th, and 20th centuries. The cry for revolution around the world seems to have impacted all the countries of Europe and spread beyond to Russia, China, North Korea, and Cuba. But most controversial is the society's influence in America, something hinted at in the very date in which the Illuminati in Germany was founded. They, 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 I think they were supposedly formed in 1776, the same year of the Declaration of Independence. And the Illuminati was established as, a, as an organization, you know. He says, no, no longer are we going to take the orders of, of the monarchs in, in 1776. Now, that's, that's a pretty important date, isn't it? Now, you made reference to 1776 and the Illuminati. Can you draw a line? And I do associate the two because the language was so symbolic. It's too direct and too precise not to know that these people who envisioned such a new world were, were actually combined in the underground secret societies of Europe. Fire was an important symbol to the revolutionaries who were determined to destroy the old world in preparation for the new. As one of them declared, with a match, one does not lift up the world, one burns it. Weissop's Bavarian Illuminati sparked the flame of the revolutionary faith, but some researchers believe that, at some point, their flame was put out. They lasted about 10 years. Now, what lasted for centuries after them was the rumor and reputation that there is a secret inner circle of Freemasons that are plotting to take over the world. Uh, John Robison in Scotland wrote a book, Proofs of a Conspiracy, where he talks about how the Illuminati are trying to take over Masonic Lodges, and Masonic Lodges are trying to take over the world. But the American Lodges, by and large, externally, as we know, did not accept that because it wasn't needed. However, it doesn't mean that there weren't uh, lodges within the United States that did. You had to have had some Freemasons that were members of the Illuminati, but were they in control of any lodges? Don't think so, because it would be against the law. Uh, in the lower levels, they could talk all they wanted about it, but to get together as a group, as a function, as Freemasons, they couldn't. There was an Illuminati scare. How, how frightening is this? Uh, we've always known there was a Masonic Lodge down the street. Could they be infiltrated by the Illuminati? Are they secretly trying to take over our government? Uh, all of this is, is foolishness. The Illuminati went out of business after about 10 years. Uh, they never spread beyond, uh, much beyond Bavaria, certainly never to the United States. It's logical to some that Weissop's organization was disbanded by 1786 after it had been discovered and outlawed by the Bavarian government the year before. But others point to a letter written by George Washington on October 24, 1798, 12 years after the Illuminati had supposedly ceased to function. Writing to the Reverend G. W. Schneider, Washington acknowledged the presence of Illuminati doctrines at work in America. The Reverend Schneider had sent Washington a copy of the book, 
Proofs of a Conspiracy Against All the Religions and Governments of Europe by Professor John Robeson, saying that his book gives a full account of a society of Freemasons that distinguishes itself by the name of Illuminati, whose plan is to overturn all government and all religion. For many researchers, the presence of the all-seeing eye floating above an unfinished pyramid stands as clearest proof of the Illuminati at work in America. I believe the, the symbol on the dollar bill, the truncated pyramid, is directly related to the Illuminati. According to Dr. Billington, it was the Bavarian Illuminati that put the fire in the minds of men and compelled them toward a global revolution to change the world. Is it possible that this philosophy is at work in America today? By our efforts, we have lit a fire as well, a fire in the minds of men. It warms those who feel its power. It burns those who fight its progress. And one day, this untamed fire of freedom will reach the darkest corners of our world. The Secret Destiny of America. Manley P. Hall wrote that world democracy was the secret dream of the great classical philosophers, saying that the brilliant plan of the ancients has survived to our time, and it will continue to function until the great work is accomplished. Many researchers believe this great work is the secret behind the wars and rumors of war America has been involved in through the 20th century, right up to the present day. Could this plan of the ancients to establish a world democracy be the real hidden agenda of secret societies? And was this ancient plan echoed in the 2005 inaugural address given by President Bush? When our founders declared a new order of the ages, they were acting on an ancient hope that is meant to be fulfilled. The occult is working at the highest levels of our society using the military and financial power of the United States to bring about this one world state. And the president has spoken openly about it, how the purpose of the United States is to bring democracy to the nations of the world. Where did this become the function of our nation to bring democracy to the world? You only need to read the writings of Mandy P. Hall where he tells you that for 3,000 years secret societies have been working to bring democracy to the world. You read President Bush's speech you know, uh, before the Association on Democracy, the National Association of Democracy. He tells you for 2,500 years people have been working to bring democracy to the world. Yet the ancient philosophers recognized that a true democracy could only be achieved by a society of perfected men. A perfected man would be comfortable in a true democracy. And probably a true democracy cannot emerge until there is enough of such human beings in the world that can take over the government of man. It will be that kind of leadership. It will be like Plato's vision of the philosopher king, the man who has wisdom and the man who has power. Democracy has the occult promise of a fair world to live in. Now, you, you mentioned the, the occult promise. How would you define a term like that for an audience who's well, I'll probably uh, define that term by saying that that, that promise okay, is, is it, the word well, it's, obs it's, it's obscure, it's, it's uh, hidden, um, not visible to the normal eye. So an occult promise is something that is inherent, but only visible to those who have that inner vision. So, a fair world is a kind of occult promise at the heart of democracy. But is this occult promise part of America's Christian heritage? And if not, could this account for why the many symbols that adorn America's capital city come not from the Bible, but from the ancient mystery religion? 
And if America were really truly a Christian nation, what would all of these mythological uh, characters be in our city? Certainly the Christian influence was very strong. From the Christian point of view, we were formed as a Christian nation. But from the occultist point of view and those associated with astrology and the ancient mystery religions, America was, of course, to, and Washington, D.C. was to represent their position. So you've had the two forces, you know, in, in America ever since its formation. While it seems that most of America's leaders have upheld Christian ideals, their reason for doing so is often questioned. If they were Christians, why would they erect monuments to pagan gods and goddesses? And if they were pagans, why confess to Christian ideals? Manley Hall suggests the reason may have been one of self-preservation. He argues that because of the persecutions of organized religion in the old world, the secret societies employed even greater methods of secrecy to protect their occult philosophies, making themselves sound as though their beliefs had to do with Christianity, which was the dominant belief in Europe. And eventually, America. He says the pagan intellectuals reclothed their original ideas in a garment of Christian phraseology, but bestowed the keys of the symbolism only upon those duly initiated and bound to secrecy. It is for this reason that all secret societies have an initiation process whereby members are bound by blood oaths not to reveal the secrets of the order. A chief factor that contributes to confusion about the beliefs of America's founders is the presence of Rosicrucianism. The Rosicrucians are a mystical arcane society that played a major role in the development of Freemasonry. The Rose and Cross which symbolize the society are also the source of its confusion. The Rose is the symbol of secrecy and represents the pagan mystery religions, while the cross symbolizes Christianity. Rosicrucianism is when the two are combined. Because of this, one can begin to understand how a man like Charles Thompson could be famous for his English translation of the Old and New Testaments, and at the same time approve the design of the Great Seal for the United States with the all-seeing eye of Horus floating over an Egyptian pyramid. A Rosicrucian influence can be clearly seen in some of America's symbols. For example, this image of a pelican feeding her young appears in Manley Hall's Secret Teachings of All Ages and is very common to Rosicrucianism and Freemasonry. Now notice the great seal for the state of Louisiana. This particular replica is found inside the inner corridors of the U.S. Capitol. The Temple Church in London is a well-known Knight Templar Church. Here we can see that the Golden Rosy Cross can be traced back to the mysterious knights. Now, notice the arts surrounding the shrine. How a series of squares are shown with red and golden roses in the midst. The shrine opposite has a variation of the same design.